Hello and welcome to Culture Shock. Culture Shock. Yeah. What are we talking about today, Brent? Today we're talking about host and hostess clubs. Host and hostess clubs. Yes. What are those? They have nothing to do with uh, small spongy snack cakes. Oh, I like Sadly. hostess cakes. <laughs> um, these are about special kinds of clubs you see in Japan a lot. Have you heard of the anime Oran High School Host Club? I've heard about that, but I haven't seen much of it yet. Well, it's a reference to these kinds of clubs. And the idea is, and there, there are different, several different kinds of, of these clubs, but you know when you go to a, a bar and you go to the, the, the sit down to the bar and the bartender's there and you chat with the bartender for a little while. Okay. It's kind of nice having someone to talk to, right? Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be nice if they like paid someone to talk to you instead of having to get the attention of the bartender who has other stuff to do, right? right. Barkeep, down here. Totally. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. So the, these host clubs or hostess clubs uh, evolved out of the idea of having essentially bars with paid attendants who are there just to talk with, with the customers. Hmm. So it's just somebody who will strike up a conversation with you, keep the conversation going, and give you kind of a, a nice night. And you're to chew on. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so there are kind of the, the low end, which is basically that, just like a, a, a bar with, with folks there to to converse with. And then there's the high-end clubs, which is more like a, a private club. So mm -hmm. you go in there, you will buy in a very expensive bottle of alcohol, which you will then uh, drink over the course of several visits. You will have a preferred uh, attendant there, a host or mm -hmm. hostess. Uh, we should mention, so a host club is a club with male attendants, hostess with female attendants. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the basic structure. And so you, you go in there, and it's a way to sort of let your hair down a little bit. Hmm. Well, is it usually a, uh, a bar or can somebody order non-alcoholic drinks? Or? So they can. So that's, that's a good question. That gets into kind of what the club, how the club makes money. Hmm. Um, because they're employing these people just for conversation, there's a strong incentive to drink a lot and to put a lot of money back into the establishment. Um, so the attendants there will, the host or hostess will... Uh, encourage you to get a drink for them and a drink for you and then another drink for them and then another drink for you. So um, generally speaking, especially at a higher end uh, host club, you're looking to spend hundreds of dollars at one of the just at one of these nights. Uh, it, it is very expensive. So, yeah. so they they would drink with me. Yes, exactly. What what, what if I'm getting drunk? Uh, it, are they getting drunk <laughs> with me? Yep, I, presumably, yes. Wow. Uh, now, obviously, if you're working there, you're going to have a slightly higher alcohol tolerance than the average person. <laughs> um, and you know, the, the Strong liver. Careful. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. But the idea is you're going to um, you know, enjoy yourself. The, the, the goal is a fun night out conversing with people. And you're not alone with just this person in the club. So you might get together with another group. You might go with several of your friends there, and so there'll be you and several hosts or hostesses. Mm. So um, you can really make a, a nice sort of uh, evening of it. Wow. Yeah. Now, of course, there's kind of a dark side to it oh. as well. Um, there's a lot of flirting in a host or hostess club. Mm. Um, there has developed over time um, more or less of a... Uh, physical nature to how hmm. folks um, interact in the club. Now, officially, um, there's not supposed to be any um, liaisons between staff and customers, but obviously also, you know, you can't just prevent that from happening outside of work hours. There, so the, the controversy is that there's a lot of kind of back and forth of will they, won't they, of a host or hostess flirting with you, implying things, suggesting things, but it probably won't actually happen that night. <laughs> so, so there may or may not have something happen later on after hours mm -hmm. after work or, or hmm. yeah. There's a great documentary about this called Shinjuku Boys, which is um, which looks at a host club specifically, and they talk to them about that whole nature of it. And there's a lot of interviews with them, and they claim that they they never actually after hours with their. Um, uh, uh, with customers because why it's it it's their you know your job there is to converse with them and to bring them in the next night you know to to, mm. to maintain a relationship as soon as that becomes physical that changes the relationship a lot so there's a lot of incentive for the host 
to keep it purely conversational. Uh, now, what about uh, dancing? If you're at a club, sure. is there... There'll be karaoke, there'll be dancing. Um, some of the dancing might get rather close, shall we say. <laughs> um, uh, and on this, this documentary, you'll see, you'll see some, some video of, of folks dancing. Um, and they're definitely holding each other. Um, so yes, and, and that's part of the fun is, uh, you know, you can go out there, you can take part of those things. And this also gets into the larger sort of Japanese culture of going out and having drinks with friends. Uh, that's a very common thing to do, and there's a an expectation that you'll let your hair down more than you would at home or at work. Hmm. So you can go out and you can dance and you can sing karaoke and <laughs> make an absolute idiot of yourself, and no one <laughs> really thinks any of the worse of you. <laughs> Which would be, I kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. I, would... <laughs> I don't want it coming back to haunt me at work. <laughs> oh, did you hear him karaoke? <laughs> yeah, um, and indeed, it's it's expected that the the boss will let his or her hair down the most. Hmm. You know, they're the ones who are supposed to kind of lead by example and just, eh, whatever, and you know, let <laughs> things happen. In fact, it's another weird thing. Often companies will actually pay for an account at a host or hostess club oh, so that wow. their employees can, can go there and get something of a discount. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's, it's that corporate, if you will. Hmm. It's pretty crazy. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, when you think about it, like we said over here, if you want to do that, there's no way for you to start up a conversation with somebody other than with a fellow person at a bar or what have you. It kind of makes sense to have folks there that the bar or restaurant is paying to get the conversation going and yeah. get people chatting with each other. The icebreaker is started up and keep the conversation mm -hmm. going. Totally. And uh, it makes sense from, from a business standpoint because then you have somebody there who's, who's drinking and continues to uh, uh, provide business. So I suppose that food and and dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it doesn't sound like it's an inexpensive uh, activity, though. No, certainly not. <laughs> um, it's one of those things that will cost you a lot of money. Um, um, again, it, the estimates are around $500 a night at a high-end club, which again is a lot. Um, when you go there, and as, as we have an image up, up here, you can actually see, you'll, you'll get sort of a menu of the host or hostess uh, hostesses there at the club and you can you kind of choose okay mm. I want to start with this person and talk to them first and uh, and so forth and, and move on from there and uh, it's an, an image there of actually inside at one of these host clubs and it actually this is before it opens so it doesn't it's not quite as uh, nice as it sometimes looks but that's okay and um, and the idea is they're, they're these relatively intimate spaces like any, any kind of a club that you go and you hang out with and you enjoy yourself hmm. Comfortable ambiance. Comfortable ambiance, exactly. And, you know, a lot is made of this sort of physical relationship with, with folks, but the reality is pretty much everyone knows the score. You know, they mm. understand what, what, what each side is there for. Mm. So unless you get really, um, unless a customer gets really confused about what they're there in the, uh, uh, in, in the establishment for, they know they're there for a night of drinks, and then you go home and you go back to work. I the suppose next day. there's rules, and if a customer oversteps oh, the yes. bounds, yes. they cut them off. Or there are very large, very burly men stationed Rah! outside, you know, <laughs> uh, in case things like that happen. Um, and yeah, you got to do it. Now, of course, the other um, controversy is the fact that this is a very um, easy job to get into for an attractive young woman or young man. Um, there's a fairly complicated process for getting a work visa if mm. you're uh, from outside of the country, mm. but foreigners are um, in demand in those clubs. Oh. So there are a lot of illegal, you know, there's a lot of illegal work oh, going some on. Some under the table. Yeah, exactly. And some of it is legitimately, okay, it's going to take you three months before the paperwork comes in. You know, we're gonna make it work until all the paperwork gets filed. I gotta eat. I gotta eat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but of course, that also means that you've got a very young person working at one of these establishments, very much at the mercy of the people oh, working there. Oh, so they could be taken advantage of in yeah. that scenario. Totally. Yeah. So it, it's like any of, of this kind of uh, of establishment that whether there is you know intentional wrongdoing on anyone's part, there's a lot of pressure. Imagine the people. The host would also. Uh, uh, or hosts, hostess or host would have pressure from the client yep. to uh, take it further. <laughs> and so it, exactly. it seems like a very careful balancing mm -hmm. act. <laughs> Absolutely. You also have the difficulty that it's a different culture in terms of what's considered acceptable. So mm. um, there, there's evidence of like 
when you're out drinking, it's considered okay to tap someone on the shoulder or tap somebody on the arm, things along those lines, even cross sex. Mm. And so, you know, a, um, a businessman that may be out there may grab a hostess by the shoulder, things along those lines, and not grab as in, you know, grabbing, but, but physical contact yeah. that we're not used to in our culture. Mm. So that can also be sort of another awkward thing that you'll get somebody from America or Norway or whatever to have different rules about yeah, yeah. that sort of personal Body space. Body contact and, and personal and space. Yeah, yeah and, it, it can be, and it can also feel or actually be more threatening than one of the other parties actually means for it to be. Cultural misunderstandings. Right. And, um, and even further, the, the some people can take advantage of those as well. So yeah. you also can decide that people say, oh, I didn't mean anything. Mm. Well, I don't know, depending on what you were actually Maybe doing. Maybe they were testing the waters. Right, yeah. So, yeah. you know, again, it's one of those things where um, you have to be appropriate in the, in the context. So, so hosts and hostesses, mm -hmm. uh, each uh, catering to their clientele. Mm -hmm. And is this, I take it, this is an evening activity? Yes. Or? So, the, so the clubs will generally open in the evening, and then they'll stay open until like 5 in the morning. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, and, uh, you know, you can absolutely stay up all night with, with these <laughs> folks if you want to and drink the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. Now, some of the lower-end establishments are, again, like bars, so they may, they may close at 1 or 2 in the morning. Hmm. Um, but if you're operating a club, then you want to be up as long as anyone wants you to be up. So it, whatever the law will allow. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and the other complexity is the is laws around what you can do where, red light districts and things like that. So mm. depending on where, on where you actually physically are in the city will also determine how late you can be open, things like that. Now, now, now I understand uh, the red light district is mm. not official red light district as right. prostitution was officially mm. outlawed sometime, I think, in the... What is it, the 60s or 50s? Um, something along those, yeah, 60s-ish, and, -ish, I think, yeah. Uh, so, so these red light districts have sort of a, mm. they must be under the radar or... Uh, to an extent, yeah. Now, in, in, um, again, this is one of those complexities where, like a host club, a hostess club is completely legal. Mm. But they're often operating in an area around a lot of these other kinds of businesses. So there's Some that overlap of there's exactly clientele, clientele and, and all that stuff. Uh, people, <laughs> yeah, and, and, and employees. Um, you know, one of the things about maid cafes is that often they, they will have people who worked at um, more red light establishments working there. Oh. So because um, it's a it, it's a reasonable career path if you're working at a shall we say a physically demanding job. Um, if you want to get out of that, you work at a cafe, you work mm. at a host club, hostess club, where um, you know, you're not selling yourself physically, but it's similar kind of Maybe work where you're just hanging around. in a around. different way physically. Well, yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> you're selling the promise the, more the, than the actual The, the promise of, yes. of, of the, the, the hope and the, mm -hmm. the, the company. Yes. The company and the comfort of having somebody to talk to. I, I imagine that has a very... Um, therapeutic effect mm -hmm. uh, I can't tell my friends or family <laughs> or co-workers any of this but right. I've got an ear that I can talk to and mm -hmm. at least this person will <laughs> listen <laughs> exactly well th there's a great uh, live action series called Train Man or Dencha Otoko uh, which is about a, a geek who sort of rescues a normal girl and uh, one of the people online that he talks to um, actually has a girlfriend at a, a hostess club and so you can see scenes in this series where he's going to this hostess club and kind of talking to her about what he's seeing that his, his sort of online friend is doing. And you get to see, and of course that's a, a one specific cultural example of this, but you, you, you see that idea that um, the guy going to the club, he's an otaku, he doesn't have a lot of friends, he doesn't have a, he, he's not, well I should say, um, he's socially awkward. He has a difficult time uh, doing this. So this hostess club is a great way for him to go out, talk to somebody who's being paid to talk to him, and he can yeah, practice his He can his refine skills. his social skills exactly. in so, the process. And she'll probably give him some good feedback, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and, and that is the intended most positive sort of environment. With, with so many people losing their social skills while they're playing with their phone these days, yep. I can kind of see the value in that because... Mm -hmm. Uh, the art of conversation is slowly disappearing, and yeah. having noticed that in myself, I'd almost <laughs> want to be able to go and converse with somebody just to get those skills back again. Yeah, wow. exactly. And compare that with, say, a maid cafe, where the um, 
the maid, if you will, uh, the, the employee is being paid to act in a very specific way with you. They're, mm-hmm. they're being paid to be a maid who is very, you know, servile, if you will, and who's sort of serving you. With this, it's conversation. You know, mm-hmm. y- yes, you, it is a um, somewhat lower social position than you, but they're there to talk about sports or politics or technology or whatever and laugh about it. So things. they have to be able to carry on conversation in all sorts of different mm-hmm. areas. So it's not just... Uh, 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 a less intellectual task. There, there's, there's some, some mind work in this. Absolutely, yes. As well as social. So I'm wondering, is this the kind of thing that's a phenomenon only in Japan, or is this a worldwide? So I'm not aware of it in other countries. I know there are host and hostess clubs in, say, China and in South Korea, um, but it doesn't seem to be as big in those other countries. Hmm. Um, part is because of the Japanese culture around getting, getting sort of drinks after work. Um, that became a common thing among business people. Mm-hmm. So that's where a lot of this stuff um, sprang up. And while that certainly happens in all other other uh, cultures, that specific thing of you're going out with your boss and your coworkers mm-hmm. every night for drinks. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very different thing. It's hard thing. to have some some social <laughs> distance from, from, from work if, yeah. if that's a scenario. Absolutely. And so these sorts of clubs offer that kind of a... Um, uh, a way of, if you will, sort of a, a, a social ease of that, where, yeah, you're with your coworkers, you're also with other folks who are conversing things, kind of steering the conversation in certain directions off of certain topics that maybe your boss likes to talk about. <laughs> um, so it, it is a uh, convenience in that way. Mm. But, uh, yeah, again, it, it doesn't seem to be huge in other cultures the way it is in Japan. Mm. Uh, they say there are hundreds of them in Tokyo alone. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty big thing. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, host and hostess clubs. Uh, so if you go to Japan, you will certainly find them. They'll be out there, and uh, uh, you can uh, have some fun, potentially. Thanks for joining us. Yeah.